Okay, for those of you that don't know, uh, we did the deed. That deed being we purchased a trailer after, you know, spending a month, a month on the road and deciding that we could do that without killing each other. Um, you might want to move those because they're going to clank up against your microphone. After uh, doing that for a month and deciding that we could do it without, you know, killing each other, we decided we were going to... Um, do the deed so we bought a travel trailer and the trailer we bought was an imagine 2500 rl a grand design imagine 2500 rl oh um, and we put a lot of thought into it we researched for six months we did a ton of research we decided on a grand design for a couple of reasons one because of the reputation of grand design um anybody that's ever owned a travel trailer knows that when you buy a travel trailer you're going to have issues with the travel trailer and grand design from all the online reviews that we read seemed to be a company that pretty much stood behind their products so that's one of the main reasons we went with it so the title of this video is the 2500 rl is the perfect big person trailer so i'm sure you're asking yourself what, what qualifies me to make that decision well i am six foot four and depending on what time of the year you catch me, if I have my summer coat on, I'm about 320. And if I have my winter coat on, I'm pushing close to 340. So I'm, I'm a big guy. So I think that qualifies me to define this trailer as a big guy trailer. So we're going to talk about some of the things that we love about the trailer and some of the things that we hate about the trailer. Um, but I'm going to start it off with talking about the things that I love as a big guy. And we have our notes right here. And now I need my glasses again because I have to read notes. Um, so the first thing that I love about this trailer or we love about this trailer is the amount of room that's in it. Once you spread the slide out, there is a ton of room inside the trailer to move around. Agreed? Agreed. It's, it's a 30 foot long trailer mm -hmm. and it, it just never feels crowded. Yeah, we did a three week, we did a job up in South Dakota and we spent three weeks in the trailer um, just kind of learning it and figuring it out. I thought for sure that at some point in time I was going to feel just like a bull in a china shop. That didn't happen. I never felt confined in this trailer. I felt comfortable the whole time. Um, the other thing about this trailer, the roof, the ceiling inside is tall. I believe it's 81 inches. It's concave, so it's rounded. So yeah, it's rounded at the top so that there's more height to it. Um, and that's as opposed to the, the Imagine XLS models, because we were originally looking at a 23 RBE XLS. Um, and my, my head was kind of on the, pretty close to the ceiling. Um, which brings me to the next point, um, and that is that the shower in the Imagine, not the XLS, but this Imagine, the shower is tall enough for me to get in. And here, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Um, so here's the shower. This is what I mean by a guy that's six foot four and girthy like I am can get in here. So let me step in. As you can see, and I'm actually wearing Crocs, so I'm a little taller than I normally am. I still have headroom. And the shower kind of hits me, the shower head it will hit me in the face. It's not going to hit me in the chest like most of them do. So yeah, shower is big guy approved. So in the XLS, I couldn't do that. Um, I, when I stood in the shower, my head was inside of the, uh, the, the dome, the sun roof, I guess you call it, and up against, actually against that dome. So as soon as I stood in the shower in the XLS, we went, nope, this is not gonna work. And, and talking about the shower, that brings us to the bathroom. Thoughts on the bathroom? They're very important. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bathrooms are very important. Don't underestimate the size or the utility of your bathroom. And what do we love about the bathroom in this one? So it's kind of in the center of the trailer and it's huge. It, it spans the whole width of the trailer. It's got two doors, two sliding doors. 
And even with those doors closed, it feels huge. You can change in there, you can towel off, you can get dressed, I can put my makeup on, I can do my hair, never once hit the walls. I love it because in our previous trailer that we had years ago, we had one of those smaller bathrooms and you would get out of the shower and you couldn't, you couldn't get dressed, you couldn't move. It was just uncomfortable. You were hitting the walls. This one, tons of room. The toilet's in a perfect spot. Yep. It's kind of in the corner, so you got lots of room to spread. <laughs> And if you're a big guy, <laughs> you will appreciate having that it's room just to with the move toilet. Move and to adjust. Um, I love the storage in it. It's got it's got a pantry, plenty of storage for your towels, for your toiletries, for I even put my laundry and stuff, my laundry soap and stuff in there. I'm going to put more stuff in there because there's still so much room in that bathroom, and it's hidden and out of the way, so it's kind of nice. I like things to be organized away, so it's mm. perfect for me. Um, the one other thing I will say about the the bathroom, the toilet in it is a round toilet, not an elongated toilet. I prefer an elongated toilet. It's just the way my booty built. So if we ever have to swap out the toilet, I will probably put an elongated in there. But there is room for an elongated toilet if that's Cute. if that's what you Cute like. Bathroom. That was probably TMI, but there you go. Okay. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, the other thing about having that center bathroom is that there's two doors that slide on either side of it, two sliding doors that will close it off. The beauty of that is you can section off the trailer. Um, and where that comes in, be, becomes important for us is a lot of times I'll be working editing in the living area space. Um, and when I'm editing, sometimes I'm listening to like, especially when I'm doing dialogue editing, I'm listening to the same piece of dialogue over and over and over and over and over and over again. And it will drive her, it will drive anybody nuts that's not the editor. So by having those two doors, we can close the doors off. I can be in the living space and editing and she can be in the bedroom space, reading a book, whatever. And, reading, and getting on my phone, whatever. It's great. It, yeah, so the ability to separate the trailer with those doors, huge. The other thing that is really bloody brilliant about the make of this trailer, the design of this trailer, is there's two doors to the outside. One, li one goes to the living space, um, the living room kitchen area, and the other one goes to the bedroom. So why is having two doors like that a brilliant idea? because it has a door to the bedroom, if you need to pull over and just call it a night, you could just pull over, go to the bedroom, and be able to use the bedroom and the bathroom without having to pop that slide out. It's great. I mean, that goes to another thing. When the slide is in, everything is still accessible to this trailer. Even the refrigerator. I mean, it kind of blocks the refrigerator a little bit, but it opens up about 80%. So I can yep. still, we pull over, we jump in here, we fix lunch. We don't have to pop that slide out. It's great. It's it's still plenty of room to get things done. It's enough to get that door open and get a six pack of beer in there. Right. Or a six pack of beer out of there. So <laughs> it's perfect. The cubbies, the cubbies besides the bed. Um, we have I, a queen bed. We have a queen bed in there, which is plenty big enough for, for, the, two of us. for the two of us. We're not and, tiny. And as I said, I am not a petite individual. But there's cubbies next to to the bed, so I use that to put my phone in, to put my my iPad in, and I can put my water in there. I put my phone in there. I put my books in there when I read, so mm -hmm. it, it's always there. It does have an electrical outlet, so if you do have a CPAP machine, you can plug it in there. It also has a USB, so you can plug yes. your phone while you're sleeping in there. It's I like it. The only problem there's one thing you don't like. <laughs> the only problem I have with it is there's a little blue light so you can see where to plug the USB in. It's bright. <laughs> it's, it's, it glows <laughs> at night. And I'm one that I kind of like it really dark at night. So that glow. So what I do is I put my phone in there and everything and then I just jam a pillow <laughs> into it. The blue light doesn't bother me at all. I have no problems with it, but it, but it bugs Tony it bugs a little me. bit. Um, oh, the other thing about this trailer, the amount of counter space in this trailer is uh, also bloody amazing. I mean, you can easily, easily prep a meal with the amount of counter space you have. And in have your appliances on the counter too. Like mm -hmm. your we keep our coffee machine out all the time. And So moving on from counter space, the freestanding table that comes with the dinette, 
I love the freestanding table because, again, going back to me being a big guy and this being a good coach for bigger people, you you can slide the table around so that when I try and put my Buddha sized belly behind the table, I can slide the table a little bit more towards my petite bride and then I can fit. Well, we can both fit in there at that oh, yeah, point. We both fit in. You can also pull the table completely out. Right now, our camera is sitting on that table. So in we the moved the, the table and, and used it for a camera support. Um, any thoughts on the, the table? Some people complain because it's difficult to get it up and down. I, I haven't had any problem with that. I don't find that problem either. I just, I've just, I found the best way to do it and I do it that way every time. Um, the, the fridge, the 12 volt fridge. I friggin' love this 12 volt fridge. To, uh, oh, to be fair though, when we first picked up the trailer, fridge didn't work. Yeah, there was a there was a short somewhere when we first picked up the trailer. We did our first like little little run with it, um, our shakedown cruise, and the fridge just wasn't working. There was a short somewhere in there, but we took it back to the dealer, um, and our dealer, by the way, was Holland RV uh, in in Santee. Santee, which is in San Diego where we live. They have been amazing as well. Yeah. We took we took the trailer back to have that fixed. It took us about a a week to get it in there um and that was probably more my schedule than their schedule i dropped it off and i got a phone call within like two hours they're like dude come get it it's done Fixed. so yeah they have been they have been and brilliant it's been running beautifully ever since mm -hmm. been running great ever since for the three-week trip that we did up to south dakota it ran fine and when i say beautifully <laughs> it's freezer yeah oh, so <laughs> <laughs> we so we we were used to because in our old travel trailer we had the old propane electric absorption fridge where if you were going to go camping you had to go turn that fridge on a day before just to get it cold not the case with this 12 volt fridge you turn it on and within like an hour tops it's cold it's cold like we got to this campground yesterday um and we had run it for about an hour or so as we drove over here got to the campground tony filled up the ice tray put the ice tray in the fridge and within an hour God, we had ice, ice cubes right <laughs> this thing rocks dang and it just keeps everything cold and it's 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 a good size refrigerator for the two of us. It's mm -hmm. a good size freezer for the two of us. The only thing that we haven't tested yet, because uh, battery wise, we only have one uh, lead acid battery. So the one thing we haven't tested yet is keeping that refrigerator running in a boondocking situation where we got to run it all night long and see where the battery is in the morning and see how long it takes our 165 watt solar panel to charge it back up. I'll do, I'm going to do a test on that. I'll make another video on it. Okay. So those are all the, the likes. Just in general, the interior is beautiful. The colors, the counters, the valances, the, where the lights are positioned. When we looked at this trailer, we're like, this thing is 99% what we wanted. And when you, when you buy a travel trailer, there's going to be trade-offs. You're not going to get 100% of everything you love. As a matter of fact, if you find a trailer and it has 100% of everything you love, go buy it for whatever price they're asking. <laughs> but you're not going to. You're going to find something that's got 95% of what you like and 5% that you don't. So those were the things that we like about the trailer. We have a few dislikes. They're pretty minor, but we have some dislikes. So the first dislike and we knew this was a dislike before we ever bought the trailer. You want to you want to address it? The couch and the dinette should be switched. They're in the wrong <laughs> they're in the wrong locations. Like the dinette yeah. should be in the back, the couch should be in the slide out because the TV is directly across from the slide out. And you have this big picture window on the back of this thing. But when we're sitting on the couch, it's at the back of our heads. Yeah. And, it, oh, yeah, oh, just oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sense. I'm interrupting. Just, ahead. I don't know why, I, unless there's a weight thing, but that's a whole other story. I don't know why they did this. I don't think it's a weight thing because there's a lot of people that have done a swap on it and have moved the, the couch over. To, and when you think about it, this dinette plus a couple of people in it, it can't be any more, he it can't yeah, be heavier than, than, than that couch. couch. And to add to that, I just hate dinettes. <laughs> I just really... I mean, I understand the usefulness because it actually turns into, if we have guests, it turns into a full-size guest bed. And we've had a guest and she said it was comfortable and everything and it was great. But I just, I think they're useless. I don't like sitting at them. I don't like eating at them and I don't like working at them. So I just think dinettes are a thing of the past. I much would have rather seen 
a freestanding table and chairs. Yeah, um, I agree with everything Tony said. The, to, for grand design, this just does not make any sense. Don't put a giant picture window in the back as a selling point that I can look out and see everything and then put me where my the back of my head is looking. Is, is looking at that yes, window. Does it make sense? So we're gonna we're we've been doing some research on some things that we we might want to do to swap it around. I think we're gonna take the couch, put it over where the dinette is, and make some type of a workspace across that back. Um, if you have a 2500 RL and have done something to 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 solve this problem let us know in the comments what did you guys do yeah um so that's first dislike second dislike the couch controls yeah the <laughs> there's these touch controls on the sofa that will turn on Vibrating. the vibrate the heat and there's a light that that's under them, a blue light that's blue under light. Them. Disco. <laughs> so you can turn your trailer into a disco tech. Um, the, those things need some type of a cover on them. I know there's some folks out there that sell like 3D printed covers. We're probably going to order them. We're probably going to order them. That or we're going to find the plans and give our son the plans because he, he has a three, pre, 3D printer. Yeah. To cover, the, but something to cover those buttons because it's really easy to touch them and start the heat. Start They're super the, sensitive. Yeah. I mean, uh, the dog pushes. <laughs> Gracie pushes it with her nose from time yeah. to time. It's that sensitive. <laughs> Um, there's no, there's no food, food pantry. pantry. Albeit, there's lots of cabinet space in this trailer. I'm not even utilizing half of it at this point, but I would like the food pantry, you know, something over here along the lines, um, that is close to the kitchen that I can pull food out. Right now I'm storing kind of food up above the couch and, um, believe underneath the cabinet and there's plenty of room. Trust me. It's just not optimal. I just think... Everybody is so used to having food cabinet, food pantries that you should yeah. have a food pantry. Well, and putting stuff down underneath the the, the countertops, down in those lower shelves, this is going to sound like such a candy ass complaint, but you know, and you don't want to be bending over every time you want to go get your frosted mini wheats, you know. <laughs> There's no, that you, Grand Design, you almost got this right. You were so, so close to getting this right. Right. But there's no, log, there's no logical place, no place that makes sense to put trash a can. trash can. The most logical place is. Under, there's a, ca, there's a. Um, countertop Countertop that comes up next to the sink, which extends your counters, which is awesome. It's a great spot. And you would think, oh, it's perfect to put the trash can under there. And we actually did originally put the trash can there. And we still do occasionally. And then we drove to South Dakota where it got really cold and we had to turn so on the heater and... Started heating up and melting the trash bag. <laughs> so there's a heater duct right there. And and I understand why they put it there so they can hide all the ducting in the inside the cabinets. Mm -hmm. But there's a heater duct right there so we couldn't really put the trash can there yeah. because the heater was blowing on it and again started melting So now the trash I kind of put the trash can in the bathroom because they're real close. They're right there. Mm -hmm. But even that's not, it doesn't, it just sits there and it looks ugly and it's not optimal. Yeah, it's just not optimal. So again, here's another, you know, here's another piece of homework for you. If you have a 2500 RL and you have found a great place to put the trash can, let us know. please let us know. Um, I've done some research online and everybody's kind of doing the same thing. It's going in between the kitchen and the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The shower door that comes with the trailer. Love the design, the idea of the whole self squeegeeing. <laughs> the thought, door. it's a good thought. It, the, great. A for effort, F for, 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 for uh, ex implementation. implementation. That's it's the word. It's supposed to be a, a thin kind of plastic that unrolls, and when it rolls back in, it's supposed to squeegee it so it doesn't stay wet and it dries off. And it does that. It squeegees it squeegees brilliantly. It brilliantly. The problem is the damn door won't stay open. God. The first trip out, we didn't... <laughs> We found a workaround, but the first trip out, we didn't have a workaround, so we kept having to come up with ways to keep that thing close so we could take a quick shower. I was trying to hold it with my foot. <laughs> I was trying to hold it with my butt. Nothing. So we don't even use it anymore. We just put a shower rod and a curtain up there. So here's the shower curtain that we talked about that we put in, the shower curtain. Here's the, the door that we discussed that just, as soon as you touch it, it goes open.
and every time we were in there trying to trying to shower, you would bump it and it would pop open. We've seen a few hacks online on on how to make it work. So yeah. maybe we'll try those. Maybe we'll try one of those. Right now, the shower curtain just fine. Yeah, the shower curtain works fine. It's if we try one of the hacks, I'll film that yeah. and so you have an idea of what it is. Yes. Um, and then this is the last one on the list, which is the, and this is a you thing. that I This doesn't bother me at all, but me. the frosted windows on, the, on doors. the doors. I just don't, I don't like them. Why? I want to be able to see out the door. If somebody comes knocking and, you know, I have all my blinds down, I want to be able to see who's out there. Um, and it just... <sighs> Yeah, you can't see. <laughs> so, um, but there's hacks for that too. People have, there's some brilliant hacks. One of them is to install a window that has a blind in, inside of it. Um, but even better is to install it upside down. So instead of having to bend over and pull it up and kind of peek, kind of lurch like, a, you know, <laughs> is to install it upside down and then you can just pull it down and peek out and see who's... Who's out there? You know, and there's no blind for it right now, so it is it is a light access point that comes in both in the bedroom and in the living room. And again, I like when I go to sleep, I like it dark. And when I wake up, I still like it dark. Yep. <laughs> so So I think that's the solution is to get the the uh the other windows that yeah. just install. But them. these are minor things. Oh yeah, yeah very minor things. Yeah. All in all, we we Flip and love this trailer. I love this trailer. It's uh, it's like we said. It's roomy. It's comfortable. It's if you're looking to get a travel trailer for a couple. For a couple, this wouldn't be a great family. if you have kids. It wouldn't be a great family trailer because it's not a bunkhouse. It's mm -hmm. you know, it's perfectly set up for a couple. But for a couple, um, it feels so roomy without having to spend so much money on like a motorhome or a tr or a fifth wheel or anything like that. It's it's an affordable. Well done, well designed couples trailer. There you go. I can't say anything more than that. So I think we will end it here. Have a lovely day, folks. We'll see you on the next one.